Now, thankfully, 80 years later, we have a lot better understanding of how epilepsy uh, is, 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 can occur in patients' brains, in patients with lesions. And so what we understand, as I mentioned before, we have a lesional zone and the ictal onset zone. And really what we understand now is that uh, the lesion itself can't create the seizures because there's no brain tissue in general in those areas. Whereas some of that surrounding tissue can very often be irritated and, and uh, you know, either there's some micro uh, compression on those areas or some sort of irritation, which then can actually cause that ictal onset zone. What we also understand is that there's an epileptogenic zone as well as an irritative zone. Now the epileptogenic zone we'll talk about in a minute, but um, the irritative zone is very interesting because it's actually a much larger area than that ictal onset zone and the lesion. And we oftentimes can see that very well in a PET study. And then the next one we see here is the symptomatogenic zone. And what that means is that you can often have seizures that start in one part of the brain and due to the you know, very fast rapid propagation, those can go to other parts of the brain. Uh, they can go to the occipital lobe, they can go to the frontal lobe, and patients may have symptoms that, that will falsely localize to a different area. And it's very important that you understand that it's not you know, beginning in that area and that's not the area to focus on. Um, and so as you can see, epilepsy now is defined in a much more, um, multiple more categories that we didn't have before. So I mentioned before the epileptogenic zone. Now this is a very important you know, idea in epilepsy surgery. There's this theoretical area within the brain that is capable of episodically generating seizures. Now, the reason it's a theoretical zone is because um, we, there is no test that can actually tell us where is that epileptogenic zone. The only way that we know that we've actually gotten the epileptogenic zone that we've uh, uh, you know, actually removed it is by giving it time and seeing if the patient continues to have seizures or not. If they stop having seizures, then we know that we were in that epileptogenic zone and that we were able to successfully treat their epilepsy. Whereas other times, if they continue to have seizures, then obviously we weren't uh, completely addressing that epileptic. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.